And they're off in the Bronze League match on Hockenheimring Circuit. Turbo, the movie actor who just joined the race after a long time on set, out to an early lead, followed by father-in-law of Olaf, Antonio, and Gino, who is always a force. Hump two, and Antonio overtakes the lead. Hump in second, and his longtime rival Gino in third. Turbo now dropping to fourth. Was it just an act? Hump back in the lead. Those two jostling as this race ramps up. Oh, here comes the devil himself, Snailtron 3000. Now moves into third place. Hump still holding on to the lead just slightly. Gino in second, Antonio back in third place. Hump now is neck and neck with Gino again. Look at these two arch rivals going back and forth. It's going to be a great race, folks. Hump trying to hold on. Escargo making a move now. Hump and Gino still jockeying for that first place position. It could go that way the rest of the race. Escargo now in second place. Hump in third. Hump falling off the trail. These track conditions are definitely affecting him. Gino trying to hang on. Will he do it? You wonder if Hump gave it too much and ran out of steam. Here they come. Snail Whale now in third place. Hump dropping into fourth. Escargo in second. Gino still hanging on. But is he losing gas in the tank? Escargo in second. Snailtron 3000 making a big move for third place. Here we come down the final stretch. Can Gino hold on? Yes! Gino is the winner! And it's official. Gino the winner. Snailtron in second. Hump in third. Hey gamers, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about the hottest new game on the Avalanche blockchain. It's a project I have been looking forward to for such a long time and launch day is finally almost upon us. This video is going to be an icebreaker, a sort of introduction to Snail Trail. There is so much to break down with the mechanics of the game itself, but I'll keep things in this first video as simple as I can while giving some of the most important information. And when the game launches, we can more properly dive into all of the intricate details and try to find the winning game plan. So, take this as your friendly reminder to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications if you don't want to miss any upcoming videos. Full disclosure, I'm not being paid a dime to promote this project. I've just done my due diligence and want to share it with my viewers so they don't miss what I think is a very good opportunity at a great project. Now, let's get to it. So, yet another innovative game has arrived on the Avalanche blockchain, and this one is a game where you race with your adorable snail NFTs to earn some sweet slime token. Yes, their native token is called Slime, and I love the name, but we'll talk more about the token later. For those in a hurry, my personal take on the game is, I love what they're doing, and I would highly recommend participating in the project, whether you're playing the game or simply trading their token. Here's my reasons. Their team have been very professional in their communications, their website is smooth and well designed, they're launching with their game fully ready, which is the standard we need to start holding other projects to. Their mechanics are well thought out, exciting, and make for a balanced gameplay with an incentivizing gameplay loop. Their partnerships are very reputable. Their Discord is very organized with good moderators. They used an anti-bot system to ensure a fair mint for everyone who wanted to play. And they're also using Dexlot price discovery for their token initial price in order to prevent a pump and dump. Their tokenomics and their emissions show that they're focused on keeping the game alive long term. And did I mention they are the first game on Avalanche to have an official soundtrack? Look, I'm incredibly bullish on this project, so let me tell you more about it. First thing I need to get out of the way is, you're not in control of your snail during the race. So snail trail still falls into the idle gameplay category. And honestly, this was kind of a turn off for me early in my research into the project. 
but I quickly changed my first impression once I realized how much thought had gone into the mechanics of the game and how much decision making was going on outside of the races. Simply put, although you're not in control of your snails on the trails, you are very much in control of your snail's success in these races. So let's take it from the start to where we are currently. The Snail Trail Mint happened on the 19th and 20th of April. There was supposed to be a last sale on the 21st, but all 7,400 snails sold out before the last day. The first day was for whitelisted community members, and the second day was for wallets that had been verified on the Avalanche launchpad beforehand. The final day was meant for the rest of the public to get a chance to mint a snail, but there was so much attention on Snail Trail by then, and the entire Genesis Snail Connect collection was sold out before the 21st. This left some people disappointed, but it's important to mention that even from the first day of mint, the Snail Trail marketplace was open for trading. And so if you're feeling that FOMO, the marketplace is your friend. This isn't financial advice, but I personally feel like these Genesis snails are undervalued. There will only ever be 7,500 Genesis snails. The rest of the snails are gonna be of a different class as seen here. And these classes have no limits to them. Rarity leads to increased value in the world of NFTs, so while other classes will eventually get diluted as time goes on, the Genesis supply will forever remain 7,500. Do with this information what you will. Talking about other classes, let's continue by discussing what you do with your snail. Starting with racing, which is the primary activity of these snails. When the game launches, you will have several tracks to race on, and they will be entirely different because you can have 9 different trail distances, 6 different themes, as well as 16 different adaptations to choose from to generate unique tracks. Each track will have one distance, three conditions, which will be chosen from adaptations, one theme, and one location. All of this randomized means an infinitely large number of tracks to race on, and that's exciting. What it also means is that you will not win every race, and you cannot lose every race unless you're incredibly unlucky. If you know anything about horse racing, then you'll get the idea that this is very similar to horse racing, or even dog racing. You do all you can to ensure you have prepared your horse for the race, but once they get to the tracks, it's out of your hands. All you can do is watch and pray. I see this gameplay mode catching on quite well, because it has an addictive appeal to it. I can already see some people sitting at the edge of their seats and cheering their snail on. And if you don't win a race, you simply want to jump back in and start another because the track will be re-rolled as well as your opponents and your odds will definitely change for better or worse. Talking about opponents, let's dig into the way the races are structured. You will have two types of races when the game launches, the daily missions and the competitive races, each of them having a total of 10 snails entering before a race can start. Daily missions are free to enter, but are time-gated, meaning you will only be able to take part in one daily mission every so-and-so number of hours which will be determined dynamically by the developers in order to control the emission of the slime token. All 10 snails participating in the race will earn slime, but the exact amount is dynamic and will be determined by the emission schedule that the team has pre-planned to ensure that the token supply is properly controlled and that too much or too little slime is not being rewarded to the players. 
As seen here, the distribution of the rewards depends on your snail's finishing position. It's also important to mention that for daily missions, there is a special distance, which is different from the nine I mentioned earlier. On the other hand, before your snail can take part in the competitive races, it must complete five placement races, which are actually your first five daily mission races. These five races will determine your snail's league placement, and this will make sure that you're not being matched up against other snails that are much stronger or much weaker than you are. For now, you only need to know that there are six leagues as seen here. Once your snail's league has been determined, you can then start taking part in the competitive races. The competitive races is where you'll be going if you intend to make a lot of money racing. Competitive races are not time-gated, so you can participate in several competitive races at the same time, but you cannot put more than one of your snails in a single race. To enter a competitive race, you'll need to pay the entry fee, which as shown here, should be anywhere between 5 to 100 slime tokens. I'm guessing this will depend on the league your snail is racing in. Here, rewards are only given to the top 3 snails. First place gets 5x, second place 2.5x, and third place 1.5x. So let's assume the entry fee is 10 slime. First place gets 50, second 25, and third 15. With the game yet to launch, I can't really give you any tips yet on competitive races, but my blind advice would be to spend a good amount of time racing in the free daily races so you can get a grasp of the game before going into competitive races. It'll help you understand the race mechanics better, as well as help you figure out your snail's trail preference so that you can always put it on its preferred trail to increase its chances of winning. And that's a nice segue into the speed of your snail. Let's talk about what affects the speed of your snail. This right here is the most important part of this documentation, so take a screenshot and keep it right next to you if you plan to make money playing this game. You can clearly see the importance of each of these factors as it impacts the speed of your snail in every race. Right at the top of the list is your snail's family and genes. It is the most important thing that affects your snail's speed. As I mentioned, we're keeping this simple so I will not dive into how exactly all these work. So please look out for my follow-up video covering these in more depth. For now, you just need to know that there are five snail families and ordered from highest to lowest, it's Atlantis, Agate, Milk, Helix, and Garden. And so it's clear to see that Atlantis snails will be faster than garden snails 90% of the time. And the remaining 10% depends on the other factors on the list, like purity, for example. A pure garden snail may outrun a less pure Atlantis snail. And then you also have adaptations and snail trail preference making up the top four on the list of factors to consider in buying or breeding a better snail. And with that, let's talk a little bit about breeding. You have to get technical to properly understand the breeding mechanics in this game, but I'll keep it quite simple and I'm sure you'll get the general idea. First thing, and very interesting mechanic, is that your snail can change its gender. Honestly, I didn't know this, so thanks Snail Trail for teaching me some snail trivia. If you didn't know, now you know, snails are hermaphrodites. How this works is, if you choose to make your snail male, it can fertilize only three female snails within a one month period. If you choose to make it female, 
When fertilized by the male genome, it can produce only one offspring within a one month period. So there are several ways you can choose to play the breeding game, whether you have one or 100 snails. You'll have to choose what's best for you based on market conditions and your snail's family and of course your personal preference. I mention market conditions because breeding costs slime and the price is dynamic. The fee for breeding will constantly fluctuate depending on the genes of the snails being used, the breed count and something called the protocol coefficient which I believe is being used by the developers to ensure that the breeding is properly controlled to avoid flooding the market with snails when there are already too many. Rarer families will also be more costly to breed. So that's the price aspect of breeding. Now to the outcome of breeding. What will your snail produce? Each snail has 20 letters in its genetic sequence. This can clearly be seen once you look at the snail. Each snail family has a letter assigned to it as seen in this table. So what happens when breeding is that both parents randomly pass down 10 genes to their offspring. This means there are literally thousands of possible outcomes when mating and with some crazy luck, even two garden snails can produce an Atlantis snail. It is theoretically possible because to belong to a family, you just need to have more letters of their gene than any other in your 20 letter sequence. So don't lose hope garden snail owners, you definitely can still breed an Atlantis. As you can see, you can be a racer, a breeder or both. And that's how you should aim to earn while playing this game. Look to explore your snail's trail preference and level up your snail to increase your adaptations so you can play in competitive races and earn slime, or become a breeder and try to breed the purest racer and sell it on the market. You've got enough options to keep the game engaging and rewarding. So that's all you need to know about Snail Trail to get you ready for a game launch. I hope this was a good overview to inform those who already own a snail and are getting ready to race as well as those who are thinking of getting into the game. I've intentionally left out some topics and only scratched the surface of others, all in the spirit of keeping this video short and beginner friendly. And this video is honestly to help you decide if you would like to play this game or not because the token is not yet being traded, I can't exactly tell you you'll make a hundred or a thousand dollars a day racing your snails, but I can tell you that you're very early on this project. So if it tickles your fancy, now is the perfect time to get a snail and get ready to race. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button Let's try to get this video to 100 likes so we can get that favor from the algorithm gods and get more people informed of this opportunity. Much more snail trail content to come. Until then, take care, stay safe, and earn on gamers, you deserve it.